Welcome to the Congregational Church of Wells as we gather to celebrate Mother's Day. And I'd like to extend a happy Mother's Day to all who are tuning in today. My thanks to the worship team for making these live stream services possible, and thanks to the musicians who enrich these experiences. Our liturgist today is Joanne Dodd. And just a program note that Kathy Hansen is our soloist today instead of David Hollis. In addition to this live streaming service, there will be an in-person prayer service this afternoon at 4 p.m. at the back of the parking lot. Please bring a chair and a mask. We will again be celebrating Mother's Day. Coffee with Friends will meet at the church tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Again, you are asked to bring a chair and a mask along with your coffee. If it rains, we will be able to go inside the church. There will be a Zoom meeting of the worship team tomorrow night, May 10th at 6 p.m. Let us join together now in worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Come God gathers us for worship, like a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings. Our God who is loving and nurturing. In love, God saves and supports us, teaching us the way we should go. Trusting in God, we continually offer our praise. Please join us in hymn 113, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Mother's Day invocation. Come, Mother God, come as an enfolding, nurturing presence. Come as steadfast love to hold us. Come, Mother God, come as an enabling, strengthening force. Come as tough love to let us go. Come, Mother God, come as friend and comforter, healing our wounds, walking away. Come as wounded leader, healer to make us whole. Amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. 
the chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. <clears throat> Congratulations to Brendel and Tyler on their marriage, April 24th. Brenda will be receiving her master's degree in early childhood development from USM. Congratulations and best wishes to Brenda and Tyler. Congratulations also to Kate, who received her bachelor degree in business psychology from University of Maine at Farmington. Kate will soon begin a position at a South Portland firm as a staffing supervisor. Congratulations and best wishes to Kate. Prayers for Jean, who is recovering at home following a brief hospital stay. And Joanne has asked for prayers for three friends, for Scott, who only has days left to live, for Jenna Lee, who has been diagnosed with liver diseases, and for Michael, who just passed. Prayers for all those dealing with various issues, including Marilyn, Todd, Paulina, Emily, Barbara, Sue, Jean and Neil, Peg, Gloria and Tim, Nancy, Ginny, Jean, Tony, David, Nadine, Shannon, Roberta, and William. We also ask for prayers for Jen, Harry, Bill, Kevin, Bobby, Alan and Selena, John, Amy, and Courtney. And finally, we ask for prayers for Lee and Rita, Christine, Claire, Carol, Cindy, Steve, Ray, and Larry. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones during the past year since we've been unable to safely be together. May they all be comforted knowing that they are in our prayers. Every thought is a prayer and everyone is appreciated. Let us join now for our pastoral prayer. God of love and grace, we give thanks for mothers who share their love with their children and who share their love with all those that they touch. We also are grateful for those who have played the role of mother in our lives, offering nurture, support, and encouragement. May you offer comfort to those who have lost mothers and continue to mourn their loss. As we continue to give thanks for the encouraging news about COVID-19 in our country, we also feel great sorrow for the people of India who are continuing to experience such pain and suffering from the pandemic. May the world rally around that nation and provide them the help that they need to emerge from their crisis. We lift up in prayer those that we name in our joys and concerns, and we ask that you offer them healing and strength, hope and encouragement. And now as we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep in the depths of each of our hearts. Let us pray. As we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's reading comes from John, chapter 15, 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love and obey, I'm sorry, obey my commands. You will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father and I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and hear and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Thus sends this reading. The simplest definition of a Christian is one who is a follower of Jesus. We follow Jesus. We regularly ask, what would Jesus do for a variety of reasons? We believe in his teachings. We have faith in the power of his presence in our lives. And we believe that he shows us the way to find peace in God. But Jesus also had many human qualities which inspired great admiration. For example, he was a profound thinker who was able to make connections between ideas which had never been made before. He made a connection between the concept of Messiah and the image of the suffering servant found in the book of Isaiah. In the great commandment, he made a connection between Deuteronomy 6, chapter, chapter 6, verse 5, which speaks of loving God with our whole heart, soul, and might, and Leviticus 19.18, which teaches that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. And then today we see another connection, a paradox that joy can be found in sacrifice. In today's passage in John's Gospel, Jesus teaches that any time we sacrifice ourselves for others, even to the extent of laying down our lives for our friend, we experience a profound sense of joy through the Spirit of Christ. Finding joy in sacrifice, another unexpected connection, and one which at first makes little sense. Our prevailing culture communicates that happiness and joy are found in immediate gratification, in accumulation, in instant satisfaction. Sacrifice is not necessarily a popular word in our day, but the truth that Jesus teaches that our deepest joy is found in sacrifice is a truth that is found in a ver wide variety of experiences. Just ask our mothers, as we celebrate our mothers and those who play the role of mother among us, we give thanks for the way in which they live out of Jesus' teaching that joy is found in sacrifice. Any mother can describe in detail the sacrifices involved in motherhood, the lack of sleep caused by babies waking up in the middle of the night, the financial sacrifices that can be as simple as buying diapers or as dramatic as helping with a college education. Mothers sacrifice their freedom, their own goals, their own needs. 
Mothers teach us much about sacrifice. But mothers will also tell you that there is great joy in the midst of the sacrifices. For as your child comes up and gives you a present that she has been working on for weeks, or gives you a flower that he has just picked, or just climbs into your lap and tells you that she loves you, the joy that is experienced far outweighs the sacrifices involved in the vocation of being a mother. As our mothers model for us the way in which joy is found in sacrifice, they help us all to better understand what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to be a disciple. Indeed, when parents, mothers, and fathers make vows at baptism, among the promises that they make is that they will help their children to see the Christian life in action through the living of their lives as parents. Our mothers, at their best, help us to better understand what it means to be a Christian. The Christian life, discipleship, requires sacrifice. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Christian theologian who died in a concentration camp at the end of World War II, often spoke of the high cost of discipleship and in fact practiced what he preached by giving his life for his Christian beliefs, serving as a model of one who would lay down his life for others. Those who serve in the church know that following in the path of Christ can be costly. It costs time and energy. It costs us time away from other activities. It costs us resources as we give our, of ourselves to build up the church. But in spite of all these sacrifices, I suspect that many who are part of a church community have found a profound sense of joy in the midst of all that they have given. The joy of knowing that you are part of a larger family, related to one another through the spirit of Christ, a family which offers support, strength, comfort, and hope when those resources are in short supply. The joy of making a difference in the lives of others, both within and beyond the church. The joy of knowing that you are building on the faith journey of those who have gone before you and laying a foundation for the faith of those who will follow us. As followers of Jesus and as participants in Christ's body, the church, we sacrifice much, but we also find great joy, just as our mothers would teach us. The connection between sacrifice and joy is also found in the process of growth. This is one of the great tasks of mothers, to help their children grow from stage to stage so that they might mature into healthy adults with a strong character and a positive attitude. When this happens, Mothers and fathers feel great joy, but it doesn't just happen. Growth only comes through sacrifice. This is true not only for parents and their children, it's true in other aspects of our lives as well. Our churches grow only through the sacrifice of the participants. Our community grows only as residents sacrifice themselves for the good of all. Our nation has grown through the blood, sweat, and tears of countless Americans who have gone before us, who have blessed us with a nation that is continuing to grow in its ability to assure the rights of all. Growth requires sacrifice, but the joy we feel when it happens makes it all worthwhile. Elsewhere, Jesus is reported to have said, that those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for his sake will find it. That's another way of saying what he teaches today in John's Gospel. When we try to hold on to what we have, our lives encounter a dead end. But when we give of ourselves, sacrifice ourselves, for the sake of the life that Jesus commends to us, we find joy at its fullest. Amen. The Congregational Church of Wells is profoundly grateful for the support of so many in the midst of these difficult times. Thanks to your pledges and donations, the church is able to serve in Christ's name and share the love of Christ with all. And now may the Lord who brought us to birth by his spirit strengthen us 
for the Christian life. May the Lord who provides for all our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord, whose steadfast love is constant as a mother's care, send us out to live and work for others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.